sending greetings and salutations upon the final Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and he greets you all the greetings of Islam, the greetings of Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So the Shaykh today is going to talk about the performance of Ruqya by a person, an individual upon their own self how to do the incantation, recitation of Quran and the Sunnah upon oneself. So you find that such a great interest from amongst the Muslims about the concept of performing of Ruqya and its benefits and how to take away any form of harm from the individual becomes important for individuals to begin to study and to learn how to perform the appropriate Rukya. So you find many people are not clearly aware of how to perform Rukya, so they go to individuals who may you know, slightly be deviated away from the path of not performing the Rukya appropriately. So you find this is not something which is impermissible of going to go and ask someone to perform ruqya upon you. You find the hadith is narrated by Aisha in the Sahih of Imam Bukhari, whereby we find encouragement of the performance or asking someone to do ruqya upon oneself. So we find that some people may say that obviously it could be difficult for a person to perform Rokya themselves, so they have to go to someone who is able to perform the Rokya. Yeah, if there happens to be a severe sickness or illness. So what we're trying to extract here is that Aisha was able to perform the Rukya upon her own self. There's nothing preventing her, there's no illness or difficulty upon her. So from this we can extract and see that it's permissible for a person to go and ask someone to carry out Rukya upon them. So putting all this aside, the person still needs to learn how to perform the Rukya appropriately and to try and cure themselves. So the first thing when a person wants to try to heal themselves in the carrying out of Rukya that we find the first thing a person needs to understand is many people or some of the sufferings that we are facing is due to primarily the sins that we carry out and we commit ourselves. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests and places obstacles and difficulties upon the human being, upon the believer, so the person may begin to repent back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if I'm the people who came before us, for example, the messengers and prophets were far better than us, but yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested and placed them in trials and difficulties to bring a, a, a better devotion and commitment towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the entrance of making dua and supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And thus we find that the companions who at the time of the Prophet والسلام, and those who came after them used to carry out in this, carry out the same practice as well. So here the Sheikh says, I want to pose this question, why does a person want to carry out this Rukya or want to be able to perform Rukya? 
Is it some sicknesses, some illnesses, and some signs of that disease or that illnesses? <laughs> or do you want to carry out this rukya upon yourself or to gaining some blessings and to better yourself, to better your condition? <laughs> and all of this is permissible and allowed inside the sharia if a person performs rukya upon themselves. So du'a will benefit the individual. So du'a is something that will benefit whatever has been destined for the individual, that it will prevent it and stop greater harm befalling the individual. Do you suffer from some strange illnesses or diseases or certain signs or symbols that you find are very strange that you're suffering and you're going through? Do you complain from a suffering or illness or disease whereby the doctors are not able to cure it or find a cure for that illness that you're suffering? So previously people did not know any the, the, the signs of diseases and illnesses that existed before. So we find that when people began to discover illnesses and diseases, they began to turn to, to, to whether it be the medical doctors or the spiritual doctors, began to turn to them to cure themselves. So if they could not find the cure or the healing of the, the medical illness, by a doctor, then they would turn to one who would carry out the, the spiritual incantation, the Ruqya Sharia, turn to that individual, read Quran upon them. So we find that the Prophet والسلام, if something would be troubling him or be a difficulty upon him, then he would blow spit into his, a slight spittle into his hands and recite the Quran and wipe it over his body. So obviously there could be other incidences which are quite clear a person could have been burned or could have been harmed or an injury that takes place. So here the person needs to go directly to the medical doctor for that ailment, that treatment. But unfortunately, we find that many of the illnesses or diseases that we find that many people are suffering from is due to, to the evil eye, due to magic and, and uh, the touching of shaitan, the harming of the jinn on that individual. And also at the same time, we have to understand that it could be just general illnesses, sicknesses that a person has which don't, are not linked to the external or the hidden world, they are genuine illnesses or sicknesses the person is facing. But we find that at times that the, 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 the devils, they, they can begin to increase that pain or that ailment the person is facing inside their body, increase that pain from going beyond their medical condition to become something of the world. So Ibn Qayyim, he mentions that when a believer is tested or harmed with certain difficulties or obstacles, then you find that the, the jinn and the shayateen, they begin to increase in, in harming that individual, causing pain to that individual. So we find that he mentioned that when a person becomes vigilant upon the adhkar, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the morning, in the evening, and seeking a cure by the prophetic traditions, we find this becomes a source of protection for that individual and removing the, the evil. So angels will descend to protect that individual and pushing away and expelling any form of evil that could be coming towards that individual. So 
So do you find the strange things that, that, that occur in your life or that you feel in a change in, 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 your, in your skin, skin rash or disease that could be there, or strange feelings that you feel which don't seem to medically seem to be correct? Yes, yeah, so you find that strange things begin to appear in your body, a scratch or some signs on your skin or your body that just seem to appear on your body. Or you begin to vomit out blood. Or you see uh, dreams or images inside your mind. Uh, while, sorry, whilst you're awake. We hear strange sounds inside the house. So sometimes people may hear, hear a knocking sound inside the house. Somebody may hear this, the sound of, of, a, of a cat, a kitten inside the house. And some people may even hear people are physically actually verbally are speaking inside the house and no one is there. Do you complain or suffer from that? Some items get stolen or begin to get missing inside your home. Do you smell strange smells inside the house? So sometimes the person may smell good perfumes, sweet smelling perfumes, fragrances inside the house. But sometimes the person will be smelling the smell of something burning, electrical burning, the appliance will be burning inside the house. And sometimes the person could be smelling the smell of the, the ocean, the sea, the, 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 the sand, etc., the ocean, the smell of the seaside, the person will smell that inside their home. And sometimes the person may see that people are walking in front of them or walking around them inside the house. So when a person sees these elements, the person needs to return back to a spiritual cure. So some of these harms or these effects that we find that the person will be suffering from is what the whole of society knows about the essence of the truth, for example, magic. So you find there could be an amulet which has been placed inside the house. So you find it could be somebody that is pouring or throwing some, some substances on the front of the door of the house. So the, one, the person may complain that they, they see a bird whose head has been decapitated or a cat which has been killed etc. lying outside their house. So you find a person could be sick or and then you find the person begins to scream and shout and shake on speaking via this individual. So all these affairs leads the person to begin uh, to decide or begin to study whether that person is in a state of good health or in a state of, of sickness. So if you want to carry out the diagnosis of your own self, and the person needs to sit in an environment whereby it's totally empty, with the meaning that there are no pictures on display or no statues or idols are placed inside that area. Because we know that the house which has pictures on, on display or statues inside that house or images, then the angels do not enter into that house. So then clear your house, clear that environment from these elements and then the performance of, of ablution of wudu, even though it's not obligatory but it's something which is recommended for a person to do. And if you have any amulets that in, on you or inside your house or somebody's given you, you these amulets, you need to get rid of them 
and destroy these amulets. Even if the person is gifted them to you, given them to you and says that it contains the Quran, in general we know that majority of these amulets they do not contain the Quran within them. And that's why that many of the Muslims are deceived that when as soon as they see an amulet, they see some writing of the Quran, the Quran, the Quranic scripture, they think it's something which is acceptable. But unfortunately you find that many times you find these amulets that there are some portions of words of, of, of the Quran and at the same time you find elements of a clear shape which are written down as well. <coughs> so the person then begins, sits down and places himself in a, in a comfortable form of sitting where they feel comfortable and then they carry out the practice. <coughs> so whether a person keeps their eyes open or closes their eyes, both are the same. The person sits down and places one's hand on top of one's head. Or he places it on the part of the body or wherever he feels the pain, the person places the hand there. Even if this place happens to be the, the private parts, they place their hand there. So we find that the, the person who is suffering from any ailment based upon the hadith that they place their hand wherever there is the pain. So even if the pain or the suffering happens to be from one of the, the private areas, whether it's the front or the back, the person is allowed to place the hand there. And it's sufficient for the person just to recite. So when the person reads the, the Quran or carries out some supplication or makes some dua, it is all acceptable and correct. So if the person wants to recite the Quran, the person will begin by reading Surah Al-Fatiha and then reading the the surahs, the end surahs of Falaq and Nas of seeking of refuge and whatever is similar to that. And you find that there is certain uh, verses of the Quran which are well known to most of the people of reciting of the Quran, the performance of Ruqya. So a person can place some headphones and use a microphone to, to increase that the effect of the recitation of the Qur'an upon the individual. So a person can place the speaker if they want at the place of the area they're suffering and raise the voice and inshallah it becomes more stronger, more powerful upon that area. So sometimes a person may pose the question, a person will carry out the ruqya themselves, read and fatiha, read the final two surahs of the Quran, and they feel no impact, no effect of these verses. But when they go to a person, a raqi, a person reads it, they may read the same or read some other certain passages of the Quran, they begin to feel some effect within themselves. What is the reason, or the possible reason for this? The Qur'an, all of it, is a cure. There are certain verses inside the Qur'an which have, a, have an impact in the removal of magic. And there are certain verses inside the Qur'an which have an impact in the removal of the, the evil eye and jealousy. And thus we find that verses which, which talk about the jinn, talk about the, the hellfire, they have an impact to, to harm the, the jinn and to, to disturb them. So 
So either the person has that knowledge themselves to know certain verses, the impact that they have, or they go to one who performs the ruqya and sits with them or learns and is able to then extract that these are the verses to be used or they can recite themselves. And many people they complain about this or they highlight this that the, the raqi who carries out the actual ruqya, the impact of their recital or their recitation has a far more bigger impact than a person sitting down and reading themselves. And this is any a reality, this is a fact. يقول لأن نفسه تعودت على القراءة فأصبح مثل السلاح القوي. So if Ibn Qayyim discusses that plausible reason of this impact that we find because the Raqi is continuously reading the Quran and the impact of the recital that we find that even when they make their spit and when, when, they, when they spit you know, on, on the person you find that it has such a strong impact it becomes like a weapon which is harming any the individual or harming the person he possessed. In the person who's a Raqi, he reads in three to four hours in a day, he reads the Quran continuously. And so thus we say, based upon this, that a person should begin in via an excessive recitation of the Quran and reading it more and more, and this will in his strength for oneself and have an impact upon oneself. And then we find indeed the importance of the intention. It has a great impact, a great role to play in the performance of Rukya. Many people who complain that their Rukya has no impact, no impact upon themselves, we ask them this question. With which intention, or what intention are you reciting? Because many people say, I'm just reciting just like this, no real focus or attention. So you find when a person, when they begin to recite, they should have that intent within, within themselves and and utter such words that, oh Allah, indeed, that these, these words have an impact to even break you know, or destroy the mountains. So indeed, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned to the end of Surah Al-Hashr, that we find we sent down this Qur'an upon the mountains, you find that the mountains would begin to tremble and cleft asunder and become, turn into dust due to the fear of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fear of the of the Quran. So we find that when a person reads with this intention that these are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they, they're able to destroy, obliterate, take away all these sickness and diseases and they wipe them away, then that will strengthen the recitation with that near the person is reading the Quran. Even when the person that performs the spitter, this a general spitter that they may make, no real focus upon it. So once again, what is your intention when you carry out that spittle after reading the Quran? So a person makes the intention that this is the, the, the summary of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if they are, they are coming out by the, the spit and whatever is there, by this, this it would destroy or wipe out whatever difficulty or hardship that may be there. One of the brothers who was suffering from, from cancer so we find that he was diagnosed to carry out chemotherapy eight eight sessions of chemotherapy to be carried out upon this individual so 
not al mawt so it's been mentioned that this one session of this intense chemotherapy and it's as if the, the person is is gone into a state of death or coming out from a near enough death experience of the, of the magnitude of the impact of this chemotherapy. That this person only took two sessions instead of eight sessions. Because he decided to sit down and carry a rokya perform and to cure oneself via the incantation. يقول كنت حينما أقرأ أقول يا رب كلامك أقوى من أي دواء. and he said that every time he used to read he used to say oh my lord indeed your speech is more powerful than any medicine. قال وحينما كنت أنفث على جسمي أقول يا رب كلام هذا النف أقوى من إشعاعات المستشفى. he said and when I used to make that spittle he said that this this spittle is more powerful. And stronger than the lights of, or, or, or the, the heat or the, the process of chemotherapy is more powerful than that. If the person comes with water, with, 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 with honey and with oil, so whether it be black seed oil or food or whatever it may be, the person brings it and then the person blows after Rukia upon this. <laughs> Even it happens to be, any lunch, whatever happens to be, the person in it, it brings it forth. Well, it happens to be the, the, the scissor, the, the low tree, or something. So you find the pistol Hindi, these are all in the natural substance that we find which have always been mentioned to be used. So a person can also blow in upon them as well. So a person takes that whether they have to drink it or after they eat it, they take it. Or it happens to be a form like, like a cream or the person will wipe it over in their body. Or the person washes themselves with it. أو يتبخر به. Or the person like the coal, the burning of the of the coal burns it. ومسألة البخور بالأعشاء فيها فتاوى من الشيخ الباز رحمه الله تعالى. And there's religious verdicts given by Sheikh Ibn Baz رحمه الله عليه about the use of bukhur to be used in this manner. وشيخ بن جبرين. بن جبرين as well. وشيخ صالح الفوزان. وشيخ صالح الفوزان as well. مكتوبة وبأصواتهم مسجلة. Yeah, which has been these religious verdicts, decrees have been written, and also they've been verbally been expressed by them as well. الشيخ الباز يقول أهم شيء لا يكون مستخدم محرما. So الشيخ الباز mentioned that anything there should be no incorrect practice or format should be used whilst carrying out this blowing. وألا يكون نجسا. And it's not something which is impure. وألا يعتقد الشخص أن هذا هو and a person doesn't place reliance upon whatever substance that they're using, whether they mentioned the oil, etc., whatever it may be. And rather, their reliance and the deeper inner trust is that the one that cures and heals is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and this is just a way or a means of getting to that goal. First, some people ask the question: Is the person allowed to use the water of Zamzam? The person allowed to recite upon it? and use it, and the answer is yes. Even normal water we allowed to drink upon that, yes we are. The water from the ocean I'm allowed to recite upon it and then to bathe and to cleanse myself with it, yes we are. The, the rain water, the person allowed to use that, or the water from the well, the person allowed to use that to perform recitation upon that, then the answer is yes. هل نضع في هذا الماء شيء من الأعشاب ممكن أن تضع ما شيء؟ يعني أو يلاو تو ميكس سام ذا يوتنس أو سام ذا إلمنس أو يوز أو يلاو تو ميكس ذم بوتر ووتر يس يو آر. بعضهم يقول جربنا وضعنا قليل من الملح فكان تأثيره قليل نقول افعل ولكن انتبه أن نصرف عقلك أن هذا هو فقط العلاج. so sometimes any people may may experiment use for example salt and then that becomes a form of healing. But like we said, there's no hard and fast food towards this, and person should pay attention towards this and not think that because of that salt that the cure has been carried out. 
عليه أن يراعي ألا يستعجل الإجابة من الله سبحانه وتعالى. And the person who carries out the recitation for themselves should not hasten in, in, in thinking that the response will come immediately to them, but the person is to be patient in carrying out the recitation. لأن الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول يستجاب لأحدكم ما لم يعجل. As we find in prophetic tradition, every single one of you is responding as long as the person does not become hasty in requesting for the response to be given to them. And likewise, when a person sits down and begins to recite upon oneself, one should not despair, not fret, not become over-worried and, and despair from the mercy. Of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the person who carries out the incantation himself, if they are cured in that sitting, then this is the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they're happy with that and content with that. And if they are not cured, they are still happy and content and know that this is from the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. بعضهم قد يتأثر من رقيته لنفسه بعد خمس دقائق وبعضهم بعد نصف ساعة وبعضهم بعد ساعة. So you find that every person differs in the impact of the recitation of rukia upon oneself. Sometimes after five minutes, sometimes after thirty minutes, sometimes after an hour, the impact before is upon that individual. قد يرقي مرء نفسه فيشعر بنعاس. So a person may recite upon their own self and they begin to feel some form of sleep or slumber. Yawning, or they feel heat or excessive cold, or they find some type of awakening the, the, the feelings upon their skin, upon their body, <coughs> or you find that as a type of a poking like a, of needles on the body of the individual, and you find just excessive muscular movements of the, of the, of the organs of the body. أو يأتيه تجشؤ كثير جشاء تكريع. أو الفاسم يجنس. جشاء. أو a lot of excessive a lot of burping begins to take place of the of the of the individual from the body. وبعضهم قد يشعر بحركة في جسمه. Or some that person can feel movement within inside inside their body. وبعضهم يشعر بآلام شديدة في مختلف أجزاء جسمه. Now, sometimes a person may feel excessive pain in different points or different areas of the body. And some may even collapse and fall upon the earth. Or you find that the person's body becomes stiff due to a pain or great pain is placed in that area. Or the person begins to excessively begins to weep and begins to cry or excessive laughter begins to take place. So a person asks them, what is with me, or what is my state, or what is my condition? Thus the person needs to learn the concept of Rukh and the concept of the touching of the devils. And that's to make it easy for the person, we say to the person to begin by firstly reading the, the verses of Rukia. And then make note of what begins to occur or take place. And then focus and read those verses or those passages where you find that the, the rock is abused to, to removal of the evil eye and, and jealousy or magic, sorry. And you find these are the verses which contain the, the contextual concept of Al-Ain, of the evil eye, or jealousy, and whatever comes in that context of such verses. And these are available or present in different locations inside the Quran, different locations. And record, you need to make a note of your your sufferings or whatever you begin to notice. Then after that, begin to recite the verses which contain the, the word magic or the sorcerers or the magicians begin to read those specific passages or specific verses. Some 
So sometimes the person may feel some impact only in the verses which contain the words of Al-Hayn or Al-Hasad, just find some impact during the recital of those verses. Or during only recital of the verses that deal with or touch upon or talk about magic. And sometimes the person may, may, may feel by a recital of either verses, throughout the recital of the verses dealing with Al-Ain or Al-Hasad or the verses of magic, the person feels that suffering or feels that pain and that hardship. Is it possible for a person to be affected by the touch of shaitan and magic and the evil eye? Is all three that possible? Yes, it is possible. We don't want to... To scare the people and make it a, a, break, a, a big subject to make people become fearful. I so just want to explain and make it easy because many people don't seem to understand the affair that it's possible that all three elements can exist. And thus you find that normally what begins to take place is the magician will send a jinn who will be carrying that magic to bring it to that individual. So when the jinn enters his body, now obviously this becomes by default the touching any of the jinn of that individual. And thus you find that the evil eye is followed with the devil and followed by the, the, the person who may have that evil eye or that intention towards that individual. So thus you find that when the the, the evil eye which is connected with the jinn enters the individual, it becomes that uh, this person is now become you know, possessed. So thus you find that person begin to see certain symbols that when certain ayat of al ayn al jasad or al hasad so it begin to have an impact upon the individual and focus upon those verses even more. So if a person feels that there's some form of a possession and the person focuses upon the possession. And also we should not belittle the concept of giving of sadaqah whilst trying to cure oneself. So we find that one of the brothers is suffering from that one of the leaders of the jinn and is attacking this, this individual or harming this individual. Every time. So every time he's in his sleep, he's trying to come to him, he's not able to, to harm him, do anything to him. So he said that if you leave whatever is inside in your right hand and in the meaning of your right, I'll do whatever I want to do with you. So when he described it, what was taking place to him, he said that this was the giving of sadaqah, which became a form of a fortress, a protection, protecting from this harm coming or befalling or coming upon you. Indeed, Salah will give you charity, it takes away, extinguishes the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it takes away any form of hardship or difficulties upon that individual. And that's we find also to make supplication, make dua for the person they are not they are absent from you and not in the absence to make dua for individual to be cured <laughs> and that's when a person makes that supplication Allah cure the person who will be suffering from the evil eye or person who may be possessed then indeed the angel is responding for you be be the same be likewise a way of protecting oneself <laughs> So a person should not suffice by just reading these verses of the Quran that we mentioned or by 
protecting themselves by whether it be rubbing the oil, etc. on their body, there needs to be a, a set syllabus, a set program of what they're going to carry out. And the most strongest way of protecting oneself or setting a program oneself is to preserve and to the recital of the whole of Surah Al-Baqarah every single day. When we have some sisters that they read it seven up to maybe ten times a day, they recite it. Then your enemy, if you hit him just once, it differs from you to hold him and to continuously carry on hitting him. So you find that if you do this every single day to your enemy, the enemy will eventually leave you alone. And so amongst the, the program of verse can set is the recital of the verse of the throne of Ayatul Kursi. Ibn Taymiyyah mentioned and talks about this. And we've seen that the impact of this in curing individuals. To recite it once or for, for five minutes continuously. And thus we find that even to recite it throughout the day or the whole of the day has a great impact in bringing about results. So we find that a person is not able to recite the whole of Surah Al Baqarah, obviously, it may be difficult for 286 one verses, then at least a person can begin to focus on reading of Ayat al Kursi. And some people read it and a simple effect impact begins to take place upon them. And others have said that in the same day of the reading of it, good results became apparent upon them. He said, how did you how did you recite them? How did you recite this verse? And he said that amongst the, the, the reason here is that when a person before they read this verse said, this is the greatest verse, the most strongest verse, O Lord, inside, inside the Qur'an, amongst your words. He said, and by this, this, this verse, take away any evil eye, any jealousy upon myself, upon my children, upon my family members, remove it away. And this is, look at the intention, this individual's removal of, of uh, affliction, the evil eye, the touching of the, of the jinn, any form of possession, all this intention the person is making was reading this verse. So one who just begins to say that I'm just reciting it, the intention or the impact is, is weaker than the one who makes it stronger intention. So thus we find that even if we take the ritual practice of myself and the shape of standing inside prayer, that we find that the intention or the focus is what differs. All of us are offering the prayer together, all of us, we stand in the rows. But one's mind could be focusing on the action of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, focusing towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and another one's mind could be in the marketplace. So both of us are doing exactly the same action, but by our intention, our focus, the impact becomes something which is different. And thus we find the reading of dua and supplication, making these, these rituals is something which overcomes, overpowers, in his salah, the, the du'a inside the salah that we find a person makes, making a supplication, it becomes a form of overcoming um, the, 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 the harms of, the, of the, the magicians and the jinn, etc. In many of the, the diseases are whereby the jinn has overcome and possessed in the individual. So don't you need call, make du'a upon the one who has entered the body, but make du'a against the one who sent against that curse, or and you make du'a against that individual who sent it. 
إذا دعوت يعني كيف يعني يصل هذا الدعاء إلى هناك أو أن هذا الأمر صعب لأنه يقيسه بعقله وهذا خطأ. So we find that many times, many of us, the, the thought and the perception may come in our mind that how, if I make dua that this will travel to this or will have this impact. And the mistake here is that we're using our rationale, we're using our intellect to understand, that, to think that how will this dua travel and have an impact in, in, this, in this hidden world. <laughs> We said that if the magic is inside a grave, if the magic is inside the ocean, how can we expel it? How can we remove it? How will dua be able to take it out? And so that's we find in the Quran when it mentions to, to Maryam alayhi salam, it says, gave her the reason that in, how can fresh water, how can dates drop from the, from the palm tree? But she's told to just carry out, do the action. الإنسان يدعو الله سبحانه وتعالى ورأيت أحد الإخوة في غير هذه البلاد في أوروبا أصيب بسحر فقلت له ادعو الله. So we find that when the person takes the avenues, the ways of of protecting themselves of what they've been told to do. And she mentioned one an individual one the European countries that he'd been suffering from some magic. He said to him to make dua. وكان عنده مطعم كبير. He had a, a big restaurant he had. قلت له ابحث. To go in search, sort of search for for the magic. قال أين أبحث كبير المكان. He said, where can I go in search? It's a it's a big big place, a big dwelling. Where can I find it? اليوم الثاني قال سبحان الله أنا دعوت الله وأنا جالس على الكرسي قال أريد أن أتحرك فوجدت الكرسي كأن في تحته شيء. So he said that I made dua and said to Allah subhanahu wa taala in the second day, just sitting in my chair, reclining in my chair, and I moved it slightly, and as if under underneath of the chair there was something on the foot or one of the legs of the chair. فجاء بكيس صغير فيه قطعة من الرخام الذي لدرجة حينما يصعد الناس كأن الناس لا يصعدون في هذا المكان. So he took out a small cloth or something that comes totally flat, so people don't pay attention to it. He took, he found this, he took it out. وأبطل الحمد لله. and then he was in cured by the removal of this. وبذل السبب والله سبحانه وتعالى سهل له الأمر. so he took the the path and took the 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 way to try to cure himself and Allah سبحانه وتعالى facilitated and made it easy for the person to be cured. في حال صرع المريض وعدم تحكمه بنفسه. so you find the person goes into an epileptic state is not able to control himself. What should a person do in this state? So some people come into an hysterical uh, format, they come into becoming hysterical. <coughs> so the person goes into, to sleep and they wake up and they say they don't know where they are. So here, the Sheikh mentioned the person should go to the Raqi who does the incantation to help them to come to a stable, in a stable state and then they're able to help their own selves because now this person is losing any their senses. So, oh beloved brothers, no matter how long the cure or how long it takes for the person to be cured, Know that deep down that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to hear your voice, wants to hear you, wants to see you making that dua to him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to purify you from your cleanse you from your sins. And as we find in the hadith, the person remains continuously in difficulties and obstacles and hardships until there is no sin or no mistake. They keep it, all of them are removed and there's no mistake that's left upon that individual. And thus we find in the narration that we find that even the, the, the fear and, and the grief and the, 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 the temperature, etc. the person faces, all this is a form of expiation for that individual. We find that these these illnesses, these hidden illnesses that we find, they are quite different, separate from the medical illnesses that we can decipher or we can visualize. 
في القرآن وفي الدعاء لأنه يعلم أن هذه الأمور تذهب بهذا الشيء. So we find that the spiritual cure, the person by using the spiritual means is able to use them to be able to cure themselves. والمريض مرض عضوي تجد عقله معلق مع الطبيب ها ما هي النتائج كيف الفحوص قد؟ And thus you find that the person who's, who's attached to, to the medical cure is always asking what are the results or how can a person, why is this not working, etc. seems fails to understand how to cure themselves. And thus you find that after some time span you come to two individuals who may be suffering from the same disease that you find, that one may be in a, be in a better state and may even be cured. Um, what would the reason be if both of them are carrying out the same practice of the medical practice, but one was saying that they have been reciting sort of Baqara and the other would say he possibly may have never even read it in the at all. المريض العضوي قد تجده على حاله في معاصيه وأما صاحب المرض الروحي تجده تغير حاله في صلاة وفي عبادة وبعد عن المعاصي. And thus you find that the person who's got an illness or a disease and pays no attention in rectifying themselves and purifying themselves, still staying away from the prayers or sinning you find, will be different from the impact of that individual who knows that they're facing some calamity or difficulty that become a stronger relationship and devotion towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. الله سبحانه وتعالى اختار لك هذا النوع من المرض لأنك ستكسب فيه حسنات كثيرة فانتبه أن تقول ما أريد هذا الشيء. So you find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may have chosen or selected that this illness or this disease that you're facing may be a source or way of increasing in doing of good deeds. So a person should not be questioning or trying to push this away. امرأة كانت مبتلاة ببلاء شديد من سحر ومس. So you find that a woman was, was suffering from immense any uh, hardship or difficulty that she was facing of, of a magic upon her. And she got tired after so many years of treatment. And she said that I don't think anybody has been tested or gone through trials and afflictions like I've been going through. So the Sheikh said to her, would you prefer to have this disease or to have a, a cancer? And she, said, she stopped she was speaking and said, there's no need to complete. I'd rather have this disease than to be suffering from a, a threatening cancer. You find that uh, one of the female patients who was cured by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why treatment Sheikh was giving to her, after some, some time, she eventually she was cured. Then she said it's, it's, it's forbidden for a person to, to pray that a that person should go back to their original state, the state of illness or difficulty that they were facing. She said that the very reason she's making a statement because when she was suffering, she would make Qiyamulay, she would read Surah Al Baqarah. So as she's saying that, I wish I had been in that original state, I would have been doing those actions that I was doing before. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit us from the small extraction of words and advice that we've given. إله الكون قد زاد